students. Now here we are again for the third video for the Applied Statistics course. We already began in the previous video for the discrete distributions and began with the polynomial distribution. Now we turn to another discrete distribution which is Poisson distribution. When the discrete probability distribution that is very useful at n is very large and b is a small and the, the variables are independent. Now we have another another requirements, so we should use another distribution. So here again, n is very large and p, which is the success, is small and uh, the variables are independent. Oh, and occur okay, for a period of time. This we uh, this case we will use a Poisson distribution. A Poisson distribution describes the number of times some events occur during a specific interval. The interval may be time, distance, area, or volume. So we have a rare event, and we have independent variables, and uh, n is very large. If we have these three requirements and three, uh, three cases, so we will use a Poisson distribution. In addition to being uh, used these uh, states of conditions, n uh, should large and p is small and variables occur independent in over a specific period of time. The Poisson distribution also can be used when a density of items distributed over a given area or volume, such as the number of plants grown a per uh, arc or number of defects in a given length of video tabs. So the Poisson distribution, you, you can use it for in these cases. Now, how we know this equation or this problem or this case is a Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution experiments should satisfy the following requirements. The four, four requirements, if it's satisfied, you, now you should use a Poisson distribution. Number one, the random variable x is a number of occurrence of an event over some interval, like length, area, volume, period of time. So you have x over a, an interval. Number two, the occurrence are random. We have all the variables occur at random. Number three, the occurrence are independent. So the variables are independent not depend to each other. Number four, the average of occurrence over an interval is known. We know what is the average. If you have these requirements, so you are in a, an exper a Poisson experiment. And so we will use the Poisson distribution, which is the formula like this. A Poisson distribution, P of X given lambda, lambda, here, lambda here, this is a Greek letter called lambda. This is a Greek letter called lambda. So, if you have x, which is the occurrence of an interval of time or volume of area, and lambda is a mean number of occurrence per unit, I mean that the mean number, which is a mean, really, I mean the mean, which is uh, calculated uh, by the number of uh, events occur to over the total number of events. So if the mean lambda is the number of occurrence per unit, so you will end the four requirements that we mentioned before are applied. So you can use this formula for the Poisson distribution, which is equal to e to the power negative lambda multiplied by negative lambda uh, multiplied by lambda to the power x divided by x factorial, where e is a, 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 a letter that a constant approximated to about 2.7183. This e, you can find it in your calculator and uh, use it, uh, or you can use this value if you don't know how to use it. But it's easily from your calculator and you put this e and put uh, to the power negative uh, lambda, which is uh, the mean number of occurrence per unit, multiplied by lambda over x, which is occurrence of an interval of time, 
and multiplied by x factorial. So uh, we have x is uh, independent variables and discrete variables take values from 0, 1 to uh, up to n, where n is very large. Uh, here we have an example to, uh, to uh, find the situation if it's Poisson or not. Next, uh, let's see, start. If there are 200 typographical errors randomly distributed in a 500 page pages, find the probability that an event, a given page contains exactly three errors. Oh, you have now errors and which you, this is the success for you. You should calculate three errors and you count a number over a length or over a given value. So find first we should find the value of lambda. Lambda is the mean number of errors. Here we have 200 errors over 500 pages. The total number for 500 and the errors is 200. So the mean number of error will be the number of errors divided by the total number of pages. So equal 200 over 500 equal to over 5, which is equal to 4.4. So we get we have lambda here, the mean number of errors. Now you, uh, this is a case of Poisson experiment because they are independent variables and uh, we and uh, the accounted over a length of time and uh, we have uh, lambda, which is a mean number of errors. So we apply the formula for the Poisson distribution like this, where x equals 3, since we have uh, want, we want the probability for that given a pages contain exactly three errors. So x equals 3. And we have already find the value uh, mean number of uh, lambda uh, equal 0.4, substituting in the uh, formula for the Poisson distribution. Here we get e, which is 2.7183 to the power negative lambda, which is negative 0.4, multiplied by lambda 0.4 to the power 3, which is x, divided by 3 factorial. Use your calculator and round the number to 4 decimal number. You find that equal to 0 0.0072. Thus, there is less than 1% chance that any given page will contain exactly three errors. Note that it's a rare event. If always the uh, Poisson distribution describes a rare event. Now, let's take another example. Another example that a false promise receive on average three calls per hour on a set tool free number for any given our the find the probability that we received at most three calls, at least three calls, and five or more calls. The first requirement, which is at most three calls, you know very much which at most means less than or equal three. So at most less than or equal three. This means the probability of zero and probability of 1, probability of 2, and probability of 3. Since we are, uh, we use R and the four probabilities, this means or, uh, sorry, or means we addition rule, use the addition rule. And since we have a probability uh, of, of four probabilities, and we have only one lambda uh, that uh, uh, some number zero, the mean number, and uh, and the calls equal to three, and three where the three calls per hour, three calls per hour, which is our lambda. So here lambda equal to three. And in the first case, lambda uh, x equal to zero and lambda equal to three. Here plus x equal to one and lambda equal to three plus probability of x equal to 2 and lambda equal to 3 plus the probability of x equal to 3 and lambda equal to 3. 
getting uh, the, these values by substituting in our rule for the Poisson distribution formula, uh, we find the uh, four properties and adding them up, we find that the atmosphere most three calls equal to 0 0.6472. Number three, at least three calls. At least three calls, this means greater than or equal three. Greater than or equal three here, it's impossible to count all the number that is greater than or equal three. So we will use the complementary rule. The complementary rule that we it's easier to find the probability of 0, 1, 2 and subtract this answer from 1. So we should find the probability where lambda we, here lambda is constant. Lambda here is equal to 3. So 0 is x equal 0 and lambda equal to 3 plus x equal to 1 and lambda equal to 3 plus x equal to 2 and lambda equal to 3. And then we, we substituting in the Poisson formula and getting the three probabilities and adding them up to find the value of uh, the theory probabilities. But we don't want this value. We want the complementary for it. So we subtract it uh, from one. So the, uh, the probability that at least three calls equal to one minus 0.4232. So our probability will equal to 0.5768. This is for number P. Number C, find the probability that five or more calls. In the same way, we, it's easier to find the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and subtract the answer. It's impossible to count the five or more. We don't want to know uh, what is uh, more. So we, we can calculate the probabilities for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and subtract it from uh, 1 by using the complementary rule. Also, here we have lambda equal to 3, and uh, we add the probability of x equal to 0 and lambda equal to 3 plus probability of x equal to 1 lambda equal to 3 plus the probability of x equal to uh, 2 and lambda equal to 3 and the same for the 4 x equal to 3 and x equal to 4. Adding up the five probabilities and uh, we find this value and subtracting it from 1 we get the probability of five or more calls. Thus, for the event described here, the part A is most likely to occur because its probability is 0 0.6472, and part C is the less uh, that least likely to occur because it is the least one. So we can compare the events by uh, using our results. Another important distribution is the hyper distribution, hypergeometric distribution. And here we uh, uh, use the case, the uh, binomial distribution, if the trials are independent. But if the trials are independent, what we can do? Now, this is a solution, we can use the hypergeometric distribution. When the sampling are done without replacement, the distribution, the binomial distribution, doesn't give the exact probability. So the trials, uh, because the trials are not independent, the smaller size of the population and the less accurate for the binomial probabilities will be occur. So in this case, we have another distribution which is can apply that is hypergeometric distribution. For example, suppose you have a chromatic of four people. If it's to select it from seven women and five men, find the probability that the committee will consist of three women and one man. Now, recall please the rules for the uh, combinations that we already uh, taken in the previous chapter and how to select three women from seven and one man from five. To solve this problem, you must find the way for selecting this. So we use the combination rule. If we find seven women from three, three women from seven, 
this means 7 companies and 3, which is equal to 35. And 5 men, and 1 man from 5 men, so uh, will be 5, which is uh, the total, uh, uh, total combination result. Multiplying by each other, we will find that the uh, value is 177. Next, what is the total number of ways to four people, that, four, that means one man plus three women? That can be selected from 12 people. 12 people, that's uh, the total number with seven women and five men. So we have four from 12. So we also will use the combination rule, which is 12 combination 4 equal to 495. Finally, the probability of getting a comment of three women and one man from seven women will be b of x equal to 175 over 495. That is by, by using uh, this rule. Now the result of uh, this this result generalized what is known by hypergeometric distribution. So we can put it in, into a formula to get a, a hyper distribution hypergeometric distribution formula. But before we uh, you use this formula, you should know what is the requirements requirement for this distribution. When you apply this when you say that the case is very uh, clear, that is hypergeometric distribution. Uh, this problem it is hypergeometric distribution. How to uh, determine this? This is when you know the uh, following requirements that satisfy the hypergeometric experiment. The first one is that there are a fixed number of trials. Number two, there are two outcomes. They are can be classified as success or failure, defect or not, male or female. So we have only two outcomes, like the binomial distribution. Number three, the sample is selected without replacement. This is different from the binomial distribution in this point. Uh, the binomial distribution, we call it again the requirement for it, that is with, with replacement. But here the, but the uh, selected sample is without replacement. If you satisfy the three requirements, so you can apply the, this formula for the hypergeometric distribution. B of x, where x is the number uh, uh, that we selected, equal to a combination x times p combination n minus x over a plus p combination n. Take care in the denominator here, a plus p here and x plus n minus x, which is equal to n. So it is very easy to save it. It's not no problem. Just to save that you, you select x from a and n minus x from p, and in the denominator will be a plus p over a total number uh, sample size, e, which is n. So given a population where we have only two types of ob objects, female and males, defective or not effective, success or failure, only two types of objects, and A items is one of kind of it, and B and other. For example, male is A and P is female, defective is A and non-defective is P. So you have another kind, which A plus P, that is a total population. A plus P equal total number of male and female and is the total population. The number, uh, the probability of P of X of selecting without replacement of the sample size n will be X items times as A and n minus X items times as P. The basic form formula here is A combination X ways of selecting the first type of items and P of combination n of x ways of selecting the second items. I mean, we have two items, a and p. We will select x from the first type and n minus x for the second type. And a plus p combination n for selecting n for the total entry population. That 
n equal to n uh, minus x plus x. So this is the formula for hyperplane. Let's take an example to understand this case very well. Ten people apply for a job as assistant manager for a restaurant. Five, ha five have five have completed college and five haven't. If the manager selects three applicants as at random, find the probability that three of college are graduated. Solution here, you should note that your, your population is divided into two different cases. That is have five have college graduated and five not graduated. So we have A and P. And we are interested in A, which is our colleagues. Okay, so the total number of cases that the number selects are x equal to 3 applicants at random n equal to 3 and we find we won't find the probability that 3 which is x that we are interested 3 are colleague graduates so we we will use the hypergeometric case because it's without replacement and we have two different uh, types of uh, community which are uh, populations that's a and b colleague and not colleague uh, and uh, graduated, fully graduated, and not graduated. So we uh, use the hypergeometric formula that five, which is the total number of graduates, combination three, which is the x, and multiplied by five, that is not graduated, multi uh, combination zero, because it haven't uh, n, which is n minus x over the total number of populations that is graduated or not, uh, which is 5 plus 5 equal to 10, combination uh, uh, x, which is equal to 3. So it's equal to 10 over 120 equal to 0 0.083. This means that is probability that for the three applicants will be uh, equally graduates. Another example, a recent study found that two out of every ten houses in a neighborhood have no insurance. If five houses are selected from ten houses, find the probability that exactly one will be uninsured. Here we find that a case that we have two types of in the population. We have a population where, uh, and uh, that's divided into people who are insured and not insured. So we have two that insured and P equal to eight, which is not insured. So N equal to five and X equal to one, that's the probability that we want to calculate. And in this case, N minus X equal to five minus one equal to four. Find the probability that exactly one will be uninsured that p of x equal to a combination x to combination 1 multiplied by p combination n minus x p combination n minus x which is 8 combination 4 divided by 10 which is the total number of houses combination the total number of n plus n minus x which is equal to 5 so we the results will be 140 over 252, which is equal to 0.556. This means that the probability that out of five houses, one, only one house will be uninsured. Another example to be perfect in this type of hypergeometric distribution that for defective tanks. A lot of to, uh, 12 compressors tank is checked to see whether there are any defective tanks or not. Three tanks are checked for leaks. If one or more of at the three defective, the lot is rejected. If they find that one or more of the three defects, the lot is rejected. They will reject the lot. 
please concentrate. Find the probability that the lot will be rejected if there are actually three defects staying in a lot. Since the lot is rejected is if at least one is found, it's necessary to find the probability that none of the factors and subtract the probability from one. Here we are in a case for a complementary rule. Please take care uh, from this type of situations and problems. Now you are in a case for a complementary rule because uh, it's, you have reject if at least one thing is found and uh, to be defective. So it's necessary to find the probability that none of the factors and subtract that from one. So we should find first that the probability of no defect. So here we object that P of no defect. That means that X equal to zero. And we have A equal to three where the three is defective and P equal to nine because it is a, a 12 or a 12, so 12, so uh, and then a equal three, and all are twelve. So we have p equal to nine, and n equal to three, where that are actually three defective, and x equal to zero, that we want to calculate the probability of no defective items. So a equal to three, combination x equal to zero, multiplied by nine which is P, combination 3, which is N minus X, equal 3 minus 0, equal to 3. And here is the total, equal to A plus P, 3 plus 9, equal to 12, and N plus N minus X, equal to 3. So, equal the values 1 multiplied by 84, divided by 220 equal to approximately 0.38. This is the value for no defective items, but we want no, no more, want this probability. We want the probability that at least one. So we will use the complementary rule. So the probability of at least one defective equal to one minus no defective, equal to one minus 0.38 equal to 0.62. Here, this means that 62%, this is the probability that the lot will be rejected when three of the 12 tanks are defective. Now, we covered the cases that is uh, in the hypergeometric distribution, and we will move to another distribution, which is the geometric distribution. Geometric distribution, another useful, useful distribution, and the distribution can be used when we have experiments that have two outcomes, like the binomial distribution, and repeated. But in the binomial distribution, we know the number of experiments and that number of times that we will do the experiment. Here in the geometric distribution, the number is not obtained, but we will calculate the experiment or get the experiment again until we reach to the the results that we want. I mean, for example, if you will have a flipping coin and you will flip the coin until you reach head, you don't want the head will be appear in what uh, in what time. So you may find the head from the first flipping time or the ninth or the fifth flipping. So you don't want how how uh, number uh, what number of times that you will do this experiment to reach the success you want so the uh, geometric distribution <coughs> is a distribution used when have experiments that have two outcomes and repeated until success is obtained you don't want the success obtained what time in these cases our success should come on the nth trial the geometric distribution tell us what when the success is likely occur. So you don't know when the success has occurred, but this distribution enables us to know what the, when the success will occur. 
So, so if you have the following requirements and the following satisfy the following conditions, you should use the geometric distribution. Number one, each trial has two outcomes that can be either success or failure, the same for binomial distribution. Number two, the outcomes are independent, the same also for the binomial distribution. Uh, should be independent very outcomes. Number three, the probability of success is the same for each trial. Okay, this is also for the, uh, the, the same for the condition for binomial distribution. We have success, for example, client, flipping client is a success of, of getting a hit one over two and for success for getting till one over two. So the one over two is the same for each trial. But that differ from the geometric distribution and binomial distribution is the experiment contained will continue until a success is obtained. We don't know the number of trials that we will do. If you satisfy these four conditions, you are in the case of an ex a geometric experiment, and you should use this formula for the geometric distribution. The formula for geometric distribution equal p of n probability of n which is the number of uh, successes or number of trials that that uh, uh, to reach the first success equal to p times 1 minus p to the power n minus 1. if the p is the probability of success on each trial of binomial distribution and n is a total number of trial at which we success first success occur, then the probability of getting the first success uh, on the nth trial applying this rule. Let's move to an example to be clear in this distribution. A coin is tossed. Find the probability of getting the first head on the third source. We don't want know why, when we will reach the first head on the third source. So the, the objective of tossing a coin and getting a head on the third toes, which is T T H, which is third toes here, and we are interested in the heads in the first toes here, heads. Then the probability will continue the outcome for tossing coin half for each uh, for each outcome, and we three times one over eight. But if we apply the geometric formula that p of n equal to p times 1 minus p over n minus 1, we have the probability that uh, in each uh, uh, outcome equal 1 over 2, 1 minus 1 over 2, and we want the uh, third toes, so n equal 3, na, na, negative 1 minus 1 uh, for the rule, so will be the same results that 1 over 8. Hence, this means that there is one of eight chance, or approximately 0.125 uh, 0 uh, probability of getting the first hit on the third toes of coin. Another example, if United States, approximately 42% of people have type A+. Plus. If four people are selected at random, find the probability that the fourth person is the first one selected with type A plot. Now we have a probability that 0.42, and we want to know the number of fourth person is the first selected. So we don't know how many times we will do the experiment. And so n equal to 4. Applying the geometric distribution rule, we got probability that 0.42 of 4 equal 0.42 multiplied by 1 minus 0.42 to the power n minus 1. So the, our results will be 0.082. This is the probability that the fourth person selected will be the first one to have a plot. Here we finish the chapter 2, chapter uh, 4. Uh, the distribution and discrete distributions, and we already covered the binomial distribution, Poisson distribution, hypergeometric distribution, and geometric distribution. Please 
study hard for these distributions and practice more you have a reference you can uh, select any exercise and answer it and i uh, introduce to you uh, the i selected uh, exercises you can that may help you for more practice please practice this uh, exercises and you will get very easily the answer this is this uh, for the first one and study of ropers the second one this exercise cover the uh, part that we uh, already have to in this video and another example is school newspaper stuff and finally uh, another example uh, that uh, the accuracy count of votes Please study.